Hello, Zay Cooker. Uh, this is the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsychologist, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. There is a couple of fatal flaws I noticed in your um, particular. I, I understand your topics about post about, about dealing with postmodernism and relativism. That was appropriate. However, in um, your dealings with um, the laws of logic and intelligent, um, and intelligent design, and they have to come from some uh, great mind, it does not necessarily follow that way. And I'll give you an example why. A computer has the capability of, of once being built. Now, remember that, the, actually, I'm going to start this one off from the following. Evolution is not purely random chance. You know those micro variations that viruses do in order to escape vaccines because they just simply adapt to the environment that happens to be around? It's the best. Nat evolution by natural selection is not pure random chance or random combinations of genes. What it is is the, the genes which allow for the best adaption to the local environment are the ones that survive. Everything else dies off. Which means that mutations, so, when viruses develop, for example, to deal with such problems as new vaccines coming out or what have you, that is what is that is that evolutionary process. Now, over billions of years, this small evolutionary process that you see in viruses and the like, over millions and billions of years, causes more and more complex life forms to develop, owing to the fact that their capabilities are required for better adapt uh, you know for better adaption owing to more changing environments for example the as the uh, mammals for example um, when the origin when the dinosaurs were originally alive um, had to be small and fast in order to avoid larger uh, predators i.e. the dinosaurs from eating them alive but when the dinosaurs were killed off and the mammals were the only uh, and everything down to the size of a mouse had been ex caused extinction because of the meteor crash, mammals had the chance to develop. But mammals um, can only sometimes can only work in certain environments, but as they developed, as mammals moved out, they had to divide um, genome types, which they were better for living in trees or what have you, became more and more predominant. And for humans, we started moving out much farther than any of our other ape ancestors. Hence, we had to develop a more complex brain. What co and as the brain gets more complex over time, uh, you know, as we say, for example, become warm-blooded, which allows for certain basics of tool making and the like, the, pr the rudiments for logic are already there. Logic is simply taking a look at the world and extrapolating from it. It is like a computer program. And what happens is that logic builds and builds the concepts and capabilities for doing logic just become working as the brain itself becomes more complex. We are a rational animal. Hence why we are, hence where that comes from. As for um, the need for an intelligent designer, well, again, as I've already, um, again, like I said, that, um, see my other videos on that in relation to creation versus evolution, misinterpretation of scripture for that one. Um, the idea of do we come from a loving God or by random chance is a false dilemma uh, because of the fact that the second of the two uh, is neither of the, it, it's not an either or of those two options, and because of the fact that the second option is actually a straw man of evolution, uh, of evolutionary theory, both of which are critical thinking fallacies and lapses in logic. Now, I'm just now, yes, uh, the other one, um, the second law, um, whether God exists or doesn't exist, um, does not fall under the um, God existing or not existing does not fall under the second law of contradiction, uh, the second law of logic of contradiction owing to the fact that the word God is used for many different definitions. Unless you define God in advance, and then that being the permanent definition of God, then you can say it exists or does, it does not exist. However, in many cases, note that I said many cases, this is not all of them, there have been a lot of cases where uh, atheists and others have made um, claims which have debunked the definition of God at that particular time, hence the definition of God has shifted. This, unfortunately, becomes what's known as the fallacy of equivocation. Examples of this. You don't believe in Zeus. You don't believe in Thor. You don't believe in um, the Great Spirit, presumably. And I suspect that being a Christian, you don't believe in Allah. 
The point is that the definition seems to change depending on which uh, tradition you have been through, and the definition of God or of gods has changed over time. There are some who are pantheists. There are some who are polytheists. There are some who are um, who are uh, monotheists. There are there is every flavor when it comes to God and causes and creation, creators and what have you. And the point is that because of these myriad of religions, and because of the point of these myriad of religions, there is a um, a shifting definition as to what God is. Therefore, God, per one definition, yes, would fall into the second law of con uh, would fall into the second law of contradiction. But God, as a general term, does not, because of the fact that this largely becomes a perception or a this largely becomes a perception or a um, definition issue. Now, as soon as we can actually clamp down on a definition which is actually suitable, then we can work on um, then and and to do that, we would actually have to know what God is or define what God is, and then look at the evidence for it. Now, I'm going to make a clear distinction here, and this is one thing I want to stress before you start coming down to me like a ton of bricks for being an atheist. I am an agnostic, not an atheist, and uh, the same reason I'm not a Christian for one simple reason. Because of this lacking definition of God, we also have another... Um, because of this lacking definition of God, it means that God is now... Uh, it's very difficult to make God a testable claim. If God is an unfalsifiable claim, it means that we can't assess either way. But there's a second problem. If we do get an assessment of what God is, there is not enough evidence, one way or another, to be able to confirm or deny the existence of God because of the fact that nobody so far has been able to make a solid working, you know, without using subjective evidence, has not been able to make a Bayesian calculation, a Bayesian statistical calculation, um, as to the probability of the existence of God. Um, just uh, for those of you who are watching and are not familiar with Bayesian statistics, what Bayesian statistic does is that it, it works a conditional ratio between the probability of something occurring and the corresponding probability of it not occurring. Um, and sometimes there's like four different possibilities or even up to six depending on what you're dealing with between medical tests and the like. And the point is that the ratio between these two, when you divide them and you get a probabilistic uh, contingency between the two, that is the um, the definition of what, and you're looking for a higher ratio of more likely versus less likely um, in order to support your point of view. And because of this, nobody has actually done an assessment to see whether it is more likely that a god exists vis-a-vis -a, -vis a god not existing. And um, a new development in science recently, known as M theory, actually uh, does show that mathematically it is physically possible to create a universe. Now the problem with this is because of the fact that, again, we, from what we know of science and the fact that the universe actually is millions of years old, again, this science is pretty, pretty well, um, again, the, the probability levels of this, being, uh, of this being accurate are within 90, are basically they're less than one in a million chance of being wrong in some cases and in most cases, you know, like the, the physical laws of the physical constants and the like in the theory of evolution are less than one in a few trillion of actually being wrong. But point being, because of that, it's not ran, um, because of that, the probability of a god existing is actually about 50-50 uh, either way, which means that without any um, further evidence to actually look at uh, one way or the other, besides purely subjective stuff like um, humans being good and the like, which can actually be accounted for by other reasons such as um, uh, the uh, people not want, um, you know, people not wanting bad things to happen to them. Um, that they, that they would do to other people. Um, for example, the karma that the Hindus believe in and the like. Um, or, you know, or just simply the fact that people get a feeling of good. Or people maybe realize uh, what's called enlightened self-interest, that perhaps by helping out uh, major groups in society of the downtrodden or whatever, the overall standard of living for everyone might improve and thus improve their lot in life as well. That sort of thing. Or that maybe they do it and get known for it and thus... Um, um, being known as a charitable person becomes a evolutionary benefit in the fact that it attracts uh, partners of the opposite sex and makes you more desirable, so thus meaning you have more offspring, that sort of thing. Um, there are evolutionary benefits for it, uh, but the point is that things like being good or what have you are subjective evidence and can be accounted for in other ways, so until there's more definitive evidence one way or the other, it becomes a 50-50, and the decision of whether a god exists or not is, a, um, is not a probabilistic one at this point, it's an emotional one. Um, you know, and the, the same goes with uh, God not existing is also an emotional uh, argument at this point. Um, the only logical one is to actually be an agnostic and to reserve judgment until all data is in. That being said, um, and you know, the point being is that um, 
having the laws of logic does not automatically predestine an intelligent designer. I guess that's my point. Toodles.